Yo, we are back with the tier rankings videos. Whoa, 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 all right, all right. I know, I know some of you, this gets a little controversial out there, obviously, but it's some of the most fun I have making videos, going through all the players in the Call of Duty League and sorting them into these numbered tiers. So basically how this breaks down is, here's the format we're using here. We got the S tier, the elite tier, the great tier, good, decent and replaceable, and we split them up into numbered tiers. There's 12 teams with five starters per team. So we're not ranking the players who are currently not in a starting lineup. So we're breaking them up into numbered tiers to get a perfectly even split here between all the teams. As you guys can tell, there's a new addition to the side here, the tiebreaker section where we're gonna put guys that I wanna revisit near the end of the video, depending on how many spots we have left per tier. So it should be a good one. There's obviously a handful of ground rules though that I need to set up before we get into ranking them. So please don't skip ahead yet. Otherwise, there's gonna be a lot of confusion and y'all going to get pissed. So listen up. How we rank these guys is in the is in the question of if there was a tournament this weekend, which guess what there is. If there was a tournament this weekend, how would I rank these players? There's obviously a lot of factors though involved with how we try to rank these guys. You've got to like consider their upside as an individual player and like whether or not the past week or two or the past three weeks is a full on reflection of who they are as a player or if there's more factors to consider obviously then there's like some hidden things like whether or not they're making their team better or if their teammates are making them look like they're better there's all the things that you have to consider then you've got to consider their roles obviously all the roles of call of duty recent plug of course a little plug we did do a roles of of cod video which you guys can go check out the role matters with how these guys play around the map and there's jobs that every player needs to do and it, some jobs are harder than others so that has to be taken into consideration as well and then of course to kind of playing with that is what weapon they're using you know if they're if they're using an ar if they're using a sub if they play like a main ar role which in this game main ars eat up the stats their kds are always really really good you have to weight that relative to the role they're playing so that's all things that are taken into consideration when we are doing this ranking system so of course with that said i mean i'll be taking into consideration a lot of stats and things to present some evidence for why these guys should be in what tiers they're in or whatever i get all my stats from easy mac shout out of course um he's the man who puts together some awesome spreadsheets and uh really really good valuable stuff for competitive cod my favorite stats in hardpoint and in dom so in respawn is the true engagement success rate which is basically what percentage of your engagements turns into either a kill or an assist it just shows how effective you are at getting kills and helping your teammates get kills around the maps and it definitely correlates to some of the best players in the league and then in s and i think the opening duo win percentages are really interesting obviously you got to consider like what what weapons these guys are using like the snipers it's kind of skewed towards snipers because they have an advantage in those things but overall there's some really valuable stats that you can go check out obviously kd is always highlighted but KD does not mean everything or even that much at all, especially in this game with Modern Warfare, where basically every team needs that submachine gun guy to just fly into the hill to play entry and give up his life for his teammates. And so uh, th there's a lot of things to consider. So now that we finally have this good foundation for heading in to these tier rankings videos versus like all the past ones, let's get right into it. Let's go. Alrighty, so let's start in the bottom left corner here and work our way over and see what happens. So okay here we go we start with methods here the man himself the funniest player in the cod league an absolute legend and again like i've said in the past he needs to start doing more content but i think i'm gonna put him right in the good tech category for now i think it makes a lot of sense he's right in the middle he's a really solid player he's been putting up numbers for toronto i mean as the ar for their squad and doing a lot of work for him and there's definitely potential for him to move up the list as the season moves along towards champs so next up is dens he has one of the highest kds in the league right now and i know paris has been struggling i'm gonna use the tiebreaker section for the first time we might have a pile up here in the tiebreaker section so we'll have to see but he's been fantastic we'll talk more about him a little bit later all right pristini so this could be a little controversial uh, I love Pristini as, as a dude. He's one of my favorite players in the league, like legitimately. He's been an absolute monster in the past for United in the past. But I'm going to put him in good for now. Um, I think that makes sense for where he's at right now as a player. Obviously, statistically, he's one of the fastest players in the league. He gets into a lot of engagements and really turns up the pressure for the Huntsman. But when it comes to the role that he's playing, there's definitely guys that are doing a little bit better than him right now. And so uh, let's leave him in good for now and see what happens. Oh, baby, we got Wuskins up next. The Bailey, the best sniper in the Call of Duty League. The dude's nasty. He's been insane. He's been one of the most exciting surprises this year in the COD League for kind of his emergence as a great player. I want to put him in S tier right off the rip, but I'm going to put him in the tiebreaker section for now and see what happens with that. So I will leave him in the tiebreaker section for now. The man, Hook. All right, so... I think Hook's a great player, and that's exactly where he's going to go. I mean, he is definitely, you know, I mean, that's how it works out as a top 30 player in the league. Of course, he's a top 30 player in the league, you know. And how it plays out, you know, the top six, then the top 18, 
than the top 30. He is definitely very close to the top 18. And if the Empire continue to be successful and, you know, as the season moves along, he could easily find himself in the elite tier. I think he's a really, really good player. So now we got Kenny. And I think he's going to be right here with Hook. He's a great player, man. I know, you know, Optic has had their problems this season, to say the least. We've seen the greatness of Kenny in the past. And Optic continues to get better. I think Kenny's definitely a top 30 player in this league. And like really, who in their right mind wouldn't want to team with Kenny if they had the chance? So I am definitely leaving him in the great category. So that brings us to the man Attach. Are we going to have back to back to back greats here? Attach could easily find himself in the elite category. And on certain games in the past, he definitely has been. But right now, the New York Subliners are still trying to figure things out. I mean, Mac has been nuts for him. For now, I think I'm gonna leave him in great as well. So maybe I should have sorted these things out differently because I got Major Maniac here now. Instantly, I wanna put him in the great category as well. Um, maybe we'll have to change things up depending on when, what ends up happening the rest of this rankings. I mean, when it comes to phase, it's hard to put anybody on their team lower than great. I mean, statistically, Major Maniac, I mean, KD wise, a 1.11 on the season. That's fantastic. He's been an elite S and D player on the year and he has one of the best true engagement success rates in the league i think there's an argument for him to be in the elite category but i think for now based off the other people that we already have in the great category i'm going to leave him there zero's been good this year man i mean obviously it started off rough with the new york subliners but now after debuting with london i definitely think zero is a good player in this league it'd be a shame to put him lower than that at this point so uh, i'm gonna leave him in good for sure so now we've got havoc and before this weekend if i would have made this video last week i probably would have put him in the decent category but the mutineers just won another tournament and it's how do you not put him in at least the good category after they're coming off what is his second tournament win of the year overall he played solid in, in the tournament so i know it's a little bit of recency bias i guess what you could say but i think the mutineers are in good shape moving forward and havoc coming off of you know gen g last year where he's on like a top four team year long it's basically impossible not to put havoc in at least the good category at this point after another win this weekend a sim is up next and uh, this is a tough one because the rocker are in like a tough spot right now as a team a sim you know because of his stats would be the like, the easy one to blame i mean i think i'm gonna put him in the decent category i've talked about in the podcast before where i do believe a sim helps their team quite a bit but i do think that other players in the league could do it even better and so for now i'm gonna put him in the decent category maybe there's a world where i can move him up if we have enough spots in the good category but i mean just like glancing down here i mean i feel like it's gonna be pretty packed here inside the good category so i'm gonna leave him in decent i think for now and we now got our first obviously s tier player Selium is nuts man this dude is insane we saw the emergence of him last year in black ops 4 on phase black with a sim actually all that Selium does for this team is absolutely insane he has a 1.21 KD on the year, which is ridiculous. The best true engagement success rate on phase and one of the best in the league. And overall, s has been good. Dom's been good. He's an elite player for sure inside the top six. So now we've got Kismet. And man, I might have to put him down in replaceable. At the beginning of the year, dude, he started off so good. So good. And I was like, yo, Kismet, he's nasty at the beginning of the year. But uh, since moving to online, Paris has really been struggling and Kismet especially has been struggling. I wouldn't have a problem with somebody putting him in the decent category, and maybe some people will have a problem with me putting him in the replaceable category, which I could understand. How about we move him into tiebreakers for now, since he's the first one in the replaceable category, and we can see where he ends up. Next up, we got the man Silly. Oh, baby. Again, Rocker Man, they've been highlighted by God Rex, Alex, and Assault. I'm gonna put him in the good category. I mean, when you look at the other faces in this category, I think it makes sense for where they're at. So I'm feeling pretty good about that as a whole. We've got one of the goats of Call of Duty up next, Formal. Huntsman, Formal. I know a lot of you out there would love for me to put him in S tier, but we have to be honest with ourselves. He is not an S tier player this year at this point. He has been nice, especially when the Huntsman won Seattle. Formal was nasty that event, but the problem is he's been really inconsistent this year. And then of course in this last event the huntsmen they struggled man and so playing the main ar role and like only having like a, like a 1.08 kd on the season i do believe he's an elite tier player for sure and so that's where we'll put him well we've got an interesting one here boys and girls ladies and gentlemen we got shotzi and uh i mean the past few tournaments he has been absolutely insane insane i feel like there's no way you can't put him in the elite category at this point 
I mean, for Dallas having the success they've had, of course, came up a little bit short here in the Minnesota event, but Shotzi, regardless, still was putting up stats the whole weekend. We've only seen a steady increase in skill from Shotzi, and I do not think we've hit his ceiling yet. Elite just makes too much sense for Shotzi at this point. We've got medals up next, and this is a tough one as well, kind of in the same boat as like Kismet, I feel like, where like he might be replaceable, but I'm honestly not sure where we're at with everybody else yet. So I'm gonna put him in the tiebreakers for now, but he's either gonna end up in decent or replaceable. We'll talk about him later. Saints, which has been a surprise to be sure for the LA Gorillas. I think I'm gonna put him in the decent category right off the rip here. At this point, I don't think you, you can really make the argument that he's good yet. I mean, that would just be way too much of an overreaction based off how the rest of the season went. Of course, he got benched earlier on or benched himself. That was a whole weird situation in itself, but uh, Gorillas came out and they showed up and performed in Minnesota. And so it's only fair to put him in decent category at this point. Saints, man. Illy is a tough one. He's up next here. I think some people will put him in elite. Some people will put him in great. Some people will put him in good. I'm definitely between great and good though. I might put him in the tiebreakers category for now. You know, he's had his struggles this season to get acclimated to the scene in respawn. He's, he's been okay solid good you know as a whole hovering around a 1kd so i would expect he ends up in great for us but i'm gonna leave him in the tiebreakers for now and, and see who else ends up in that area oh baby pharaoh okay this is gonna be tough again man all right so of course th this might come off as like an overreaction or uh you know recency bias but i truly do think pharaoh is nuts at this game i think he's really really good at this game i'm gonna put him in the elite category i know some people are not gonna be happy about that they probably think he's a great player on the same level of who as hook and kenny and all those guys and attach which that there's a good case for that but in modern warfare we've seen pharaoh be nasty at this game and now Florida's won two events with pharaoh since he's joined the squad i honestly i think he's a lock inside the elite category at this point with how good he's been he has a 1.12 kd running an smg in this game that's nuts he's an elite player so we've got his teammate frosty up next he's somewhere in here for sure i i think i'd put him in the good category i'd be surprised if i brought him down to decent i'm gonna leave him in the tiebreaker section for now and talk about him a little bit more later but i'd expect him to be in the good category shawnee is up next oh um man in my opinion i think he's a lock in replaceable i might that might be a little bit harsh it might be a little bit harsh but it, it's been fine i guess but i don't think there's much of a change there just in my opinion i think he's a replaceable player and we've got the man simp obviously as always we slot him right up in the s tier simp is definitely a top six player he could easily be called the best player in Call of Duty, which in my opinion, he still is. Simp's just nuts, man. He has a 1.19 KD on the season as an SMG only, which again, the next highest is Pharaoh, who's played significantly less games than Simp as a whole on the season. So just a ridiculous player on the map all over the place. He's of course an S tier player. Shocks is up next. And uh, yeah, it, he definitely is down here somewhere. I'd imagine I put him in decent. I'm going to put him in the tiebreakers for now, though, because I think there's a world where he maybe gets moved down. Maybe we'll talk about him later. Next, we got Aqua. All right. So he is definitely in the middle here somewhere. I wouldn't have a problem if somebody argued that he could be in the great category, but I think you've got to put him in the good category for now and just kind of play with it there. The Gorillas, again, showed a lot of improvement. So if they keep this up, man. I think a handful of them are going to have to move up into the great categories here. For now, I'm going to leave Aqua in good. I think that feels about right. Proto. Okay, this is interesting. So, of course, Seattle made all their changes. Karma retired. They brought in Proto. And he was good, man. He was real, real, real solid for Seattle as a whole. They pushed FaZe to the brink. And then they beat the Alex Liss Rocker. With Proto, they look like a better team for sure. I kind of want to put him in the good category. I'm going to put him in the tiebreaker category for now. Because um, I, I guess there's a world where you can move him down to decent for sure. But I got to say, I was impressed with Proto. Vivid is an interesting one as well. He's definitely either in good or decent. Man, he's like a tens god. I, he's so nasty in tens, man. It's There's been a struggle for him at some points here on the year playing in matches themselves. I think this might be a tiebreaker candidate as well. This is going to be a tough conversation near the end near the end of the uh the the video here for a lot of these guys skies man skies has been pretty much nasty for the mutineers all year long really even before pharaoh got there i think he's an elite player 
right up there with his teammate Pharaoh, right next to him. Skies has been nuts with the main AR in hand most of this season. And now with Mox gone, he kind of takes that role over as a whole. And they've looked great with it. And I really do believe that Skies has been nasty and has been proving that he can be an elite player in this league. I mean, he was really good in Black Ops 4 as a whole. And he's kind of ascended now to, at least in my opinion, an elite player, a top 18 player in the league right now. Uh-oh, we got Crim6, the man himself. Um, This is a tough one, man, because with where the Empire are at, they're a really, really, really good team. I don't think it'd be fair to put him better than Hook at this point. It hurts to put him in good, though. He's right on the fringe, in my opinion, I think. I'm going to put him in the great category, though. I think that makes a lot of sense for where he's at right now as a player. And as a team, the Empire are a good team. And uh, we'll put him in a great category. Temp. He's perennially been one of the best players in Call of Duty. He is, you know, nasty when he's feeling it. I think I'm going to put him in the great tier. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to put him in the great tier. I truly believe in the talent of Temp. And uh, as the sub items continue to improve, I think they're definitely a sneaky pick for this weekend. But moving forward, Temp is a great, great player in this league. So uh, I'm going to slot him right in the great category. Got Priesta, man. I don't want recency bias to destroy Priesta. Priesta is nuts. For some reason in this event, he got absolutely smoked. He got pooped on in this event. Um, I'm going to put him in the elite category though, man. I know some of you are like, oh, this is favoritism, blah, blah, blah. But like, come on, bro. If you've watched Call of Duty, you know Priesta is insane. For whatever reason, something went wrong for FaZe and specifically for Priesta in the last event. I'll make some excuse for him. It was probably his internet. Maybe it was windy outside. I don't know. But Priesta is a guy that is definitely inside the elite category still. And uh, one of the best players in Call of Duty for sure. All right, Pander is up next. Ooh, I mean, I don't want to be that guy, but you know, right, right. If we got, if we have to put at least six people in replaceable, I feel bad. But I'm, I'm gonna leave him replaceable for now. I think there's a lot of guys out there could probably do what Pander's doing right now, and hopefully that can turn around, man. I like Pander. I want him to be a beast, but uh, I'm not sure if he's the answer for Seattle. And Big Alec is up next, the man himself. Man, you gotta put him in the elite category, right? He's been nuts. Obviously, coming off a dub for the Huntsman two events ago, he played fantastic. He has a 1.08 KD on the year, which for a flex is really, really good. Of course, you know, he does play a lot of AR on the map, especially in SD. He's always got the AR out. So you'd expect him to have a little bit better KD than most when it comes to flexes. But you look at his stats across the board, and they're really, really good. Dom, hard point. He snipes so well in SD. He's, he's such a good SD player overall as well. I think it, it's just an easy argument for him to be in the elite tier as a whole bands is up next man the toronto ultra guys are tough to rank man in my opinion i think they play together as a team like they collectively all of them individually aren't that great maybe methods i think methods is a good player as a good main ar player for sure i mean as a collective they play better than the sum of their parts in my opinion they're they're just a good squad and they're really starting to figure it out right before this tournament and then classic had to go home and they weren't able to scream leading up to the tournament so then they underperformed so in my opinion, Toronto is a sneaky pick for the rest of the season if you had to make one. Um, I'm going to put Bance in tiebreakers section for now. Luca, next one up. I think I'm going to put him in the decent category, man. I mean, at the beginning of the year, Luca was nice. And Luca and Dens were kind of like that duo at the beginning of the year. Like, whoa, what is happening with Paris? They're kind of nasty. But things kind of even out for Paris. Unfortunately, I think I'm going to put him in the decent category. Uh, yeah, obviously, I'd love to see him higher, but I think DC makes the most sense for him right now. I mean, come on now. Of course, Octane is, he's hes probably the second best player in the league, maybe third, depending on what you feel about Selium. I think these are probably the three best players in the league right now. Simp, Selium, and Octane in any order you'd like. I'm okay with all of them. They're turrets on the map, and uh, Octane is the definition of a turret on the map. Hopefully, Seattle can get things figured out because Octane is doing his part, but the other four guys need to fall into place and figure this out as a squad to truly make that run coming into champs. The Italian Stallion, oh baby. Um, are we gonna have another another Subliners player here in great? I think that's gonna make sense. I'm pretty sure I had him in great in the last rankings video as well, which in my opinion, just makes a lot of sense. They're good players, man. They're really good. They're great players. There's a reason why New York is debatably the best, if not at least one of the best hard point teams in the league. It's because they got guys who can slay out there and Zuma is definitely one of them. He's a great player. A beezy dude. Holy moly. Like I said in the past, you know, I mean, in Black Ops 4, of course, he was a top three, four player in the league. I'm going to put him in the elite category here. He's the entry player for FaZe. And in my opinion, probably the best entry player in Call of Duty. 
which is why you got to put him at least in the elite category. But statistically, of course, when you look at him versus like Simp or Selium, Simp and Selium are definitely benefiting from what Abizi does on the map and how he helps his squad. Every pro says they hate playing against Abizi because he's so annoying on the map in SD and respawn. He's always making those crazy weird plays that are just impossible or tough to make. He's so valuable for a squad. Next, we got Classic. And uh, again, man, the Ultra players. I just, I'm struggling with where to put him. I think Classic's either in good or decent. He's been a solid, solid player this year overall. I'm going to put him in decent, I think, because just because of how things are going to end up working out here, it looks like, based off what we got left. I'd have no problem if somebody put him in good. Clayster is up next. I mean, I feel like if I have if I have Krim in great, I've got to put Clay in great, right? I have to. If Krim's in great, you got to put Clay in great. So in my opinion, they're like a two for one. Wherever you put Clay, you're going to put Krim. Wherever you put Krim, you're going to put Clay. So let's put them both in great and see how that feels here in the end of the video. Accuracy, next guy up. Um, <laughs> I'm going to put him in decent, man. I, I don't, personally, I don't think he's that great of a player right now in world war ii he was nuts he was insane in world war ii but for some reason in modern warfare i'm just not getting the vibe that he's like really doing it for the squad maybe they think otherwise but at least from my perspective from watching how this team plays if you put an elite ar on that team i bet they would be the best team in the league could you imagine octane on that team could you imagine formal on that team oh my goodness they would be insane if they had an elite AR to, to really control the map like that, it would be it would be an X factor and they would be dangerous for sure. We got another another one of these guys, the Ultra Cami's up next. Let's put him in. Let's put him in tiebreakers for now. He could easily be in the decent in the decent category, depending on who else we want to put down here. So let's leave him in tiebreakers and talk about him in a little bit. Dylan is one of the toughest players to rank, man. Based off like pure pure like upside talent, like what we saw in Black Ops Four. I mean, he was literally a top five, top six player in Black Ops 4. He was literally single-handedly winning reciprocity matches last year. This year, he's had his moments where you're like, oh my word, that's Dylan right there. That's Dylan. But he hasn't been able to be consistent. London has been improving for sure. It feels like Zero maybe unlocked some of that Dylan potential. But for now, I'm going to leave him in great. By the end of the year, if the Ravens start picking things up, he could easily end up in elite or it may be even S tier by the end of the year. Who knows? Dashy, Big Brucey is up next. Big Brucey. He's an elite player, right? He's an elite player. His talent is there. It is there. Optic just needs to figure out how to play as a squad consistently, and they're going to be nuts. It, when you got Slasher and Dashy like that, controlling a map, how they can control a map, if their subs can really start figuring things out, they're going to be untouchable. And uh, Dashy's an elite player for sure. We got some interesting ones coming up here. Oh my goodness. Mac has been wild for New York since he's joined. I don't know how you don't put him in elite at this point. I mean, him, Shotzi, Pharaoh, kind of like the, the new emergy, the new emerges, emergences. I don't know how you English like that, but it, it's definitely, it definitely an elite player, man. He has a 1.1 KD as an SMG, which again is so, so hard to do, especially when you're coming in middle of the year first tournament you know it was a little bit slow for him but after that he has been full steam ahead like a drag racer woof, straight towards dominance i mean mac has been wild and uh mac melts he does he truly does <laughs> go let's move on let's move on oh my goodness envoy is up next and uh i mean throughout the year statistically like kd wise he doesn't have that crazy of a kd i think he's sitting at a one second, he is sitting at a 1.02 on the year. So yeah, nothing insane. And there's definitely a lot of guys in the elite tier that have higher KDs than him. I mean, what he does on the map to help a team, and s &D especially, I think he's an S tier player. I just truly believe the Envoy is so valuable for a team, which is why I'm gonna put him in S tier for now. But again, there's a world where he gets dethroned if some of these young guns are still frying like they're frying right now by the end of the year. Tiege is up next. Um, we need to get pick up the pace here. This video is gonna last for like three hours. I'm gonna put him in decent. I mean, man, in the past he's been a good, great, maybe even elite player, but this year has been a struggle for him, and uh, not what you love to see. I'm gonna put him in decent for now. Awakening. Oh my goodness, this is interesting. Is up next. I mean, you could make an argument that he's in the great tier, even after one tournament. But for now, I'm gonna put him in good. Right after I recorded the last one, Mac had like had his first event, which is what I did with Mac. 
I think I'm gonna treat this the same way. I'm gonna put him in good for now. I think even after one event, he proved that he's going to be a pretty good player in this league. If he continues that, he could easily move up this list into the elite category by the end of the season for sure. Decimate. Again, these gorillas are interesting for sure. I think he's been really, really, really solid. I'm gonna put him in the decent category for now. Yeah, decent category for now and uh, see what happens. But again, though, he can move up for sure if the gorillas keep on performing. Now we got Apathy, another really tough one. I would love to put him in the great category. I'm gonna put him in the in the tiebreakers for now because he might have to move down considering we're already getting pretty full here in the, in the category. Assault, I think you have to put him in the great category. He's been wild. A massive reason for why the Rocker have even had any sort of success this year is because he's been such a great main AR for him and uh, you gotta respect that. So Chino's up next. I mean, sorry, big money Chin, man. He's the, he's the man, dude. He's an absolute unit. But uh, we're going to have to put him in replaceable. I'm sorry, homie. I'm sorry. All right. Blast is up next. And he's another interesting one. You could make the argument for something here after these past few events that Blast has been insane. Again, it's online Call of Duty. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put him in the good category because he has definitely been in these events good for sure. And uh, yeah, I mean, if he keeps this up, he can move up the list because he's been wild. The King of Cod. Okay. I need to address you scump fans out here so in the last video i didn't put him in s tier which again i think was the right choice he's been good this year but he by no means has he been a top six player this year he's been a top 18 player this year which is why i'm gonna put him in the elite category but he has not been a top six player this year and if you guys think that i'm just i'm sorry man I'm sorry, but it's just not true. It's not right. Like overall on the season, he's got a 0.98 KD. He has a 52.4% engagement success rate, which is in the bottom half of the league. But he's definitely been better in Dom and he's been, his best game mode by far has been Search and Destroy. But at the end of the day, Hardpoint is the most important game mode in COD. And uh, he's been slacking overall. But we cannot act like a guy who's been playing as long as Scump still being in the elite tier isn't insane in itself. So let's move on to God RX here. Man, I, I have had him in the S tier this whole year, but these last few tournaments have been really, really worrying for the rocker. I want to believe in his talent. I'm going to put him in the tiebreakers for now, and we can we can talk about it here in a second. There is a conversation to be had there for sure. Alex is up next. I think he's a great player. I'm putting him right in the great category for sure. Uh, just a unit and a reason why the rocker had so much success this year. Scraps is up next. This is a tough one. Um, let's put him in uh, the tiebreakers for now. Zed has been here. I think I'm gonna put him in decent. He has definitely not been great most of this year and uh, deserving of decent. Slasher, he is in the argument for S tier at this point for sure. Let's put him in tiebreakers. And then we've got Slacked. Um, I'm gonna put him in decent. All right, here we are. We made it. <laughs> we made it. Guys, this video has gone really long. We have a few tiebreakers left here to debate, which is going to be some of the toughest discussion. Let's start at the bottom here with uh, some of the replaceables. I guess, look at that, guys. It kind of worked out. We have three guys here. We need six. Oh, man. You know, the ultra guys are really, really tough. Like I said, you could maybe debate different guys that might end up here in the replaceable tier. Someone has to end up down here. So, you know, who you who are you going to put down here? You're going to put shocks down here? Maybe. You're going to put bands down here? Ah, slacked? Maybe. But... I don't know. I think that works out, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Uh-oh. We need four more here in good? Oh, no. So, all right. I guess that, that moves Havoc, Pander, and Vivid into good? We've got Slasher, God RX, and Wuskins here to decide. We have to choose two of the three to put into the S tier. Oh, man. I think Wuskins definitely is there. I think Wuskins is definitely there. So now it comes down to either God or X or Slasher to put in the S tier. Man, I might go the recency bias here. I, I might put Slasher in the S tier, which again, that does give us, you know, like what? Three main ARs in the S tier. I don't want to favor the main ARs too much, but I mean, it's not like God or X doesn't use an AR. He definitely uses ARs on multiple maps. He's a flex. I'm going to move God or X down to the elite tier, which means that we need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. So we need one more player in every single one of these categories. So we're going to have to bump some guys down. Oh no. Which one of these guys in great to move up to elite so we can move one guy up and that is not going to be an easy choice at all. Oh no. 
I think I'm going to move a touch up to elite. So that gives us a 12th elite player, man. Alex, Assault, they're all so good, dude. They could easily be inside the top 18. Um, I feel bad leaving any of them out, but uh, I, let's just go with that for now. So the next domino to fall here is we need to move two of these guys into great. Wow, Zers in me trousers. All right, I'm moving Dens into great. He has His KD alone separates him from the rest of the guys here. And then, then it gets really, really tough. I'm gonna go with the tiebreaker of the best team here. All their stats are so, so similar. I'm gonna go the best team, give the benefit of the doubt to the younger player. Illy is nasty. And I only expect him to get better and better as the year moves on. And so I'm going to give him the tiebreaker and move him in to great. Man, that sucks. So we have to move Apathy and Scraps, the legends, two absolute beasts, down to good? Which means that we need to move now one guy from good down to decent, man. Man, I mean, again, the Gorillas had one good event. Proto has just started playing. Okay, so it's, I think it's either down to Proto or Vivid for me. I like them both a lot. They have a lot of potential as young guns in the league. I'm going to move Proto back down to decent, man. That sucks. Easily, I'd be totally fine with him up and good. That's going to finish off our list here, too. There it is, man. There's our list. S tier, elite, great, good, decent, replaceable. There it is. There's the end of, end of this pain and suffering. This is a really, really long video. So I hope you guys enjoyed it, man. This was basically a podcast. If you guys enjoyed the video, like, comment, favorite, subscribe. I really do appreciate all the support. So again, I will not be doing this again until champs, the end of champs, after champs. So maybe like the end of August or something like that. So keep up with the podcast. We'll be doing a full breakdown of everything with the podcast tomorrow coming out. Best of three. Call of Duty Esports Podcast, of course. Shout out, shout out. And I do appreciate all the support, like I said. As always, guys, again, I'm your voice of Ace Lee, and we will see you next time. I'm out.